Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifics where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Our first story today is about the planet Jupiter. Not only is Jupiter the largest planet in the solar system, but its formation completely altered the shape of our solar system. A new study by Rice University in the US looked at how the early growth of Jupiter around 4.6 billion years ago changed the formation of primitive meteoroids, the inner planets like Earth, Mars and Venus, and even disturbed certain aspects of the Sun. So Jupiter was one of the first planets to form, right after the Sun formed. At that time, the solar system as we know it did not exist. It was just gas and dust all around, and the Sun formed by drawing all that material towards itself. With the early Sun in the middle, all the gas and dust just formed what is known as a protoplanetary disk around the Sun. It was from this disk that all other planets and asteroids and meteoroids were supposed to form. Except when Jupiter formed, it was so big and its gravitational pull was so strong that it created ripples in this disk. Jupiter's formation, in fact, created what the scientists called traffic jams of planetary material in different parts of the solar system which in the future led to the formation of meteoroids. But most importantly, Jupiter was possibly responsible for the Earth being what it is. When planets like Earth, Mars and Venus formed so close to the Sun, there was a huge risk that the Sun's strong gravity would just pull them into the Sun. But it was Jupiter's presence at the other end and its opposing gravitational force that kept the Earth in place. Next up, Researchers from Curtin University in Australia have discovered a new devilish bee species in Australia, which they have aptly named as Megachild Lucifer. How can a bee be devilish, you ask? Well, this particular female bee that the researchers discovered had two perfect little devil-like horns on its head. And now, this isn't the only special thing about this bee. The Megachild Lucifer represents the first new bee species discovered in over 20 years. The researchers performed DNA barcoding and they confirmed that it was a previously unknown species. This discovery highlights how little is known about Australia's native pollinators, especially in regions that are threatened by mining. The researcher, Dr. Prendergast, discovered the insect as she was looking at a rare wildflower in Western Australia's goldfield region. She wrote in the paper that both the bee and the rare wildflower could be at risk from habitat loss and climate change. She also called for greater effort by mining and conservation groups to survey the native bees in the area before they begin developing an area. Next up, there's one kind of pollution that is slowly destroying the world but has a quick and easy fix. It's called artificial light pollution. A new study in Nature Climate Change says that artificial light at night, ALAN, is disrupting the level of carbon in the world because it's increasing the amount of carbon that's released by ecosystems, but it's not helping with carbon absorption. The authors of the study found that light pollution at night is increasing the release of carbon dioxide by plants, microbes and animals and all of this carbon is just staying in the atmosphere. They found this by using satellite data and 86 carbon flux monitoring sites across North America and Europe, showing that the effects of artificial light pollution at night is at continental levels. The study also said that artificial lighting covers about 25% of the Earth's land surface by now, and it grows by 2% annually. But the way to fix it is so easy. All we need to do, said the study, is better lightning design, such as dimmable and directional lights. This could massively reduce this overlooked environmental threat. Finally, Everyone knows that seahorses are one of the only animals where the males get pregnant and carry the fetus to birth. But how exactly does that happen? What are the hormonal and other changes that male seahorses go through to carry their offspring? A new study by the University of Konstanz in Germany has an answer. Female seahorses deposit their eggs into the male's brood pouch, which is the space where the eggs are fertilized and then carried until birth. The study found that unlike in us mammals, it is the male hormones called androgens which developed the placenta-like structure inside the brood pouch of the seahorse. 
kind of like how our female uterus prepare themselves for the fetus. And now the main feature that the study found is that the male seahorses do not have an important gene which is called FOXP3 which protects the body's immune system. It's essential for the body to not attack its own tissues, like its own baby. But the seahorses still carry their babies and their hormones sometimes help maintain the pregnancy and ensure that the body does not reject it. So instead of just a reversal of roles, the pregnancies and the cellular responses associated with them are very different in male and female births, according to the study. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into the podcast.